slow burn and dark return of Gamma Ray vs. the Riga in the prior year, Daae went back to the Gamma Ray writing board and decided to use a new formula to target a new core audience, much like the Godzilla series, that being children. As the film begins, we're introduced to a series of stock footage reels of volcanic eruptions, as well as a news report detailing volcanic eruptions in the countryside of Japan where a new highway is being built. And wouldn't you know it, the volcano erupts, and shortly thereafter, Gamera shows up. And now we're introduced to the title card of the movie. This obviously being Gamera vs. Gauss. Post-credits were introduced to a room full of men who were responsible for the construction of said countryside highway, and shortly thereafter they are all dispatched fairly quickly by an unknown yellow beam which saws their helicopter in half, killing virtually everybody on Shortly thereafter we're introduced to our main focus of the film, Eiichi Kanemura played by Naoki Abe who ventures into the forest with a man and is subsequently abandoned, after which the man is surprisingly eaten by Gauss in what has to be one of the best shots of the entire movie, Gauss's mouth opening. I, it, it just surprised me with the detail. But then Gauss breaks free from his mountainside cave and attempts to eat a eat shade, but not before Gamera shows up to save the day. First showdown of the movie, Gamera and Gauss do battle in the countryside near the highway construction zone, and Gamera gets royally messed up, virtually having his arm severed by Gauss's beam, and resorting to rolling himself in his shell to fight Gauss. Gamera spits his fire, picks up Ichi, and ironically of all places, to retreat to, he takes him to an amusement park. Yeah, we'll roll with it. The following day, the military comes to bomb the side of the mountain from which Gauss appeared and learns, like every other monster movie, that you don't fuck with a giant monster if you only have a very small military. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the ocean, Gamera's resting and healing himself from damn near losing a limb in his first fight with Gauss who reappears later that night, completely destroys the construction camp, and makes his way into the city to wreak havoc once again. Gauss not only destroys a castle, but also wreaks havoc along the rail lines amongst the rest of the city, and in a queue from the original Godzilla, also takes possession of a train, and eats some more people. Gamera shows up, and the two once again duke it out. This time, Gamera plays a little bit safer, and they pretty much fight in the air the whole time until daybreak when we start to learn something about Gauss. After Gamera rips off his feet, he can not only grow his limbs back, but they're also harmed by sunlight. Yes, Gauss is a vampire. They use a vat of blood to lure Gauss in and make him dizzy so that he can't fly away once daybreak hits, although it is ultimately thwarted, as is their forest fire plan, which ultimately just draws Gamera in for his final fight with Gauss, during which, honestly, this has to be one of the best fights of the entire series, thus far. You know, the effects are top-notch, especially when Gamera finally kills Gauss by dragging him into a volcano. I don't know. Gamera's got this weird thing for dragging his enemies to their deaths. Overall, the movie's very good, the effects are very good, and it obviously takes a more child-friendly approach. Gauss is a really neat monster, really neat design, and some really neat features, pretty much making him a giant vampire bat. Uh, the Gamera suit obviously got a facelift, which looks good. Um, so overall, I would definitely recommend this uh, if you're a show a kaiju fan. It is one of the better entries in the Gamera series. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you for the next review. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.